are coming to you this afternoon from Chinsegat Hill. We're sitting on the porch and just talking about the fact that it's probably a million degrees outside and yet here we are um, with the nice breeze and not obscenely hot. But I am here with two seventh generation Brooksvillians. Um, we're first generation, so I always think it's fascinating to come and, and find people with such deep roots. But not only are they seventh generation Brooksvillians, um, they share a common story of how their families even got here in the first place. So we thought it'd be really fun to just kind of dig into the history of Hernando County by starting with two of the people who represent families that have been here the longest, and that is Blake Etterington Bell and Andrea Hedick reed Thanks guys for coming out today. Thanks yeah. for having us. Now we're doing a little reenactment for those that care um, uh, from um, Blake's grandfather, Roy, and also uh, Alfred McKeithen. And so um, we'd love to have you guys go back and look at the county website on that. But um, tell me the story of your ancestors coming together to Hernando County and what that was all about, whoever wants to go first. Well, I think it's a pretty neat story. I happen to be really excited and passionate about it. But um, so basically, Blake's grandfather, Edderington, and my grandfather, Anderson Mayo, um, were South Carolina plantation owners. And um, they found an interest uh, in wanting to come down here to Florida. Was it the Armed Occupation Act? Mm -hmm. I don't know that they necessarily were um, benefiting from that. I know Pearson did. But they were interested in coming here to help, you know, cultivate the land and probably wanting to just, I mean, I see it as like almost like an adventurous type lifestyle, just wanting to do something epic, kind of. Um, so they came down here together to, um, to see the land, which there's a, a really neat thing. Um, Anderson Mayo's journal kind of logs his trip down here with Francis Etterington to see the land. Um, which there's a lot of cool information in that because um, they make stops and they meet with people and those people are notated um, throughout the journal um, and when they get here they just fall in love with it. I mean with the hills, I mean it's a different than a lot of the landscapes you would normally see in Florida mm -hmm. um, and so ultimately they decided to come back here and Francis Etterington uh, bought this land and I think he was the actual builder of Chinsiga, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah and then um, uh, my four times great grandfather, I believe, he settled up the way um, on what is now Snow Hill. Um, but ultimately, the families were very connected. It was the McCowns, the yeah. the Hedicks, the Mayos, the Etteringtons, and the Snows, um, and they kind of all they kind of all like hung out together out here, um, and also were very involved, you know, in a lot of the come up and, and whatnot of the city of Brooksville. So I, I think that's a pretty neat story. Yeah, and to add to Andrea's um, start, it was 1851 that um, Anderson and Francis decided to travel down from South Carolina. And you know, we think about going to South Carolina now, hopping on a flight and being to South Carolina in an hour or an mm -hmm. hour and a half. Um, the, the just thinking back and trying to get in their minds, traveling down from South Carolina to really what was um, a, um, a not um, a kind of a wild territory back then. You think of you think of uh, settlers going out west to settle, and and the stories of that. These two men were doing something similar. They were just going south instead of going west, and they were coming to Florida. That the population was uh, very small then. Um, the city was not even founded, the city of Brooksville was not even founded then. Um, Tampa had not even uh, come, into, come into play at that point. So you have these two men coming down from South Carolina together and with the idea that they wanted to find land that they could farm in Florida. Uh, my understanding is when they were in South Carolina, uh, and this was uh, not uncommon to these two men, but they had overproduced their, their land in South Carolina and because they had overproduced it, they were having trouble growing things. So they wanted to come to fertile ground, which was Florida. Obviously the same crops they grew in South Carolina were not the same crops they were going to grow in Florida. So when they did come down and they did establish homes and farms here, um, they started growing things that they had never grown before. They started growing citrus that they had not grown, grown in South Carolina before. And it was a hit and miss style, style mm -hmm. Um, business venture because there were crops that I understand did very well and then crops that they tried to grow here that didn't do so well but they ended up calling it home and um, as Andrea said 
uh, the families intertwined and uh, there weren't a lot of people here at the time. So um, um, Anderson Mayo uh, ended up uh, marrying into some of the some of Anderson's family married into the Snow family, some of the Etterington family married into the Mayo family. So you had those two men and, and bring their families down here and then they kind of intertwined and intermarried. And then, um, you know, you have Anderson Snow, for example, who um, is a descendant of Anderson Mayo and Francis Etterington, the two mm -hmm. men that came down together. So, um, you know, we're all tied through that one journey down in 1851 right, yeah. to uh, what is now Brooksville. But you also think about these two men coming in 1851 to this piece of property right here that we're uh, sitting on t today and looking at the landscape on top of this hill and the beautiful views you have of Fernando County up here. And, and they originally called it Mount Airy. And, and you understand why, as you mentioned, it's hot up here today, but that breeze that comes through, that airy breeze, it, it provides some relief. And um, I would have to think that to both of these men, it, it reminded them some of their home in South Carolina that they were about to leave. And I think we kind of do undermine the importance of how brave those people were coming that distance because there's nothing when you get here. So, and there's not even roads, there's no maps of this area. So you're literally getting in a wagon and everything that you need when you arrive has to come with you. So you're bringing your animals, you're bringing the feed, you're bringing all the seeds that you need, um, any household stuff that you wanna to have with you. And you're doing it by wagon, you're sleeping under your wagon. And when you get to a river, you build a raft or you build a bridge like it this was not a simple thing and it took weeks I think um, the particular journey when Francis came back with his wife was about five weeks and she was pregnant at the time and as someone who's been pregnant I think you and I could agree like we would have said no, I would have said no so we're talking about all these marriages but so we need to understand how there could be so many so you said uh, Mayo just had how many kids it's he had one daughter okay yeah. and but the Etterington's had 11 they had Fran Francis Etterington had seven daughters and two sons mm -hmm. uh, that lived to adulthood, lived to adulthood. Right. right so that ended up being married and having children and 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 a lot of them stayed in her name the county um, one of the daughters married a Hale and that that the Hale daughter then went on to create the McKeithen family in her name the county um, one daughter married uh, Dr. J.R. Snow who um, was also from South Carolina but had moved uh, to Brooksville and they ended up getting the property that we are on now ended up buying the sisters out of the property and owning the home and, and calling this um, this manor home um, and then the Snow family of course grew in um, the county um, but then that family married um, into the McCowan family which was a long um, time family in Hernanda County but it was interesting because when Andrea and I have discussed this um, Anderson Mayo's lineage has McCowan in it. His wife. His was wife a, was yeah, a McCowan. Anne, Anne was a McCowan. And then um, Ernest Snow, who was the son of Charlotte and J.R. Snow, mm -hmm. married Cora McCowan. So you have these families. Which was her niece. That which was, was her Anne, niece. That was Anne right. niece, yeah. So the McCowans kind of also bring the families together as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I become, believe they, come, they came down from South Carolina as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know their connection up there, um, but uh, several family members. I think that um, Anne Mayo, Anne McCowan Mayo, brought her sister Nancy with her definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and then there were two brothers that stayed up in mm -hmm. South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, but... Yeah, they were they were involved, I think, in the in the journey down. And oftentimes we focus so heavily on, you know, Anderson Mayo and Francis Etterington, the two that first came, you know, to Chinsay get to see it. But really they're very fascinating stories of the women who were influential in um, making um, this land what it was and their travel down and their journals that they kept. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating to see all of that. And for example, Ernest Snow was married twice. His first wife had nine children, died in childbirth. Mm -hmm. Second wife had nine children. She died, died in childbirth. So you have, you know, these women who are having lots of children with not a lot of good medicine back then. Mm -hmm. And the sacrifice that they gave to help, you know, build not just Chinsigit, but a community, really. And I, and I think the community as a whole hasn't understood 
how widespread the influence of the people that lived here was because it was mainly daughters. And so the last names are the same. You're not going to find other than Blake Etterington Bell. You're not going to find Etterington's around, you know? And so the name died, but the descendants, the importance of that family is ingrained in absolutely everything. So um, tell me, Andrea, as you've done your, your family research, what has been the most fun story that you've found? I think I've, I've found a couple. I have a lot of letters, um, and I have one of like the original letters from um, Anne McCown Mayo um, that she was writing home to her mother and father, and um, just talking about you know how hard things were and and whatnot, but you know what they were doing. And I've enjoyed reading those reading those letters, um, but probably one of my favorite just because it, it's you know I I can imagine after reading. The diary of Elizabeth it? Robbins. El Elizabeth Robbins, mm -hmm. and like seeing the way that they all like kind of, and I like can visualize it in my head the way they all would have like inter, you know, came to see each other. And there she mentions meeting Sally, and Sally's my um, great grandmother. Um, and she mentions from her lookout, you can see Mel Mel Hedick's house, which would have been um, my great grandfather. Um, so I can just kind of see them all like, you know, hanging out and whatnot anyways and like kids kind of coming back and forth like that's how I imagine it. But there was um, an article that I had found in my grandfather's briefcase after he passed away that um, was about the Robins entertaining um, my great grandparents for their uh, golden wedding anniversary. And so I always thought that was really neat because growing up the picture that's associated with it was always in my granddad's house and I always thought it was really neat, um, but probably you know, didn't know too much about the history of it. And I can, at this point, I think the photo probably has, I don't know, 30 people. And I can name every single one of them almost by looking at the photo just because I think it's awesome. And it, you know, there were times where I had come out here um, with my husband and we would sit out here and I'd be like, it is crazy to me, like to be able to sit right here because the photo was taken right here. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just was really neat to me. Um, and you read the article and they talk about how they entertained you know, the different music, and I've looked up the music to listen to the songs that they listen to, and um, yeah, so that's probably one of my favorites because it's so closely tied to Chinsegan. And to be able to sit in a space that your family has been sitting in for 170 years, yeah. and that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. How about you, Blake? Yeah, so uh, growing up, my grandfather loved history, and I think I got the love of, love of history from my grandfather, so, you know, as a young boy sitting on his lap, he would tell stories about Chinsigit to as kind of our bedtime stories, which was a really cool thing. Um, you know, being a being a lover of history myself, I always was just listening very closely to every single word you know that he he spoke about. But um, he told the story. His his grandfather was uh, Dr. J. R. Snow, who would who practiced dentistry in this house, and he of course was born. My grandfather was born on the hill. But at the time, they weren't living in this house because the, the hurricane that had come through had shifted the house. So they were actually living in another house um, on the hill. But they would come and they would play on the old dentist chair, uh, Dr. Dr. Snow's dentist chair that was in the house. And they would swing up, you know, twirl around and swing around. And, and they used that as, as their playground back then. And um, he always talked about that and how much fun that was. Um, but, you know, also my grandmother would, when we were young, would drive us up here and um, she would just let us walk around and she would tell us about, you know, the history of, of the home and, and, and the graves. And um, it was always a fun adventure driving up to Chinsigit. And um, I know Andrea and I, you know, we feel close to it because like you said, our family sat here, you know, in the 1850s on this porch right here and had tea together and probably talked about their family history from the 1750s mm -hmm. yeah. and you know um it's just it's it's really a it's a gem for our county and um but it's also something so special that the house has maintained it the current structure for so long because so many houses like this that were built back then have not and um we're so lucky to have have it standing today to be able to showcase and get a sense of what it was like in 1850 to live in rural Florida um, back then. So do you, as descendants um, of our founders, essentially, um, 
personally feel any responsibility to kind of continuing on the preservation of those stories and what kinds of things, if so, like what kind of things are you, are you involved in? Yeah, 100%. I think Andrew and I both do uh, feel that way. I, I don't want to speak for her, but we have uh, talked enough to know that we are both passionate about the history of, of our family in Hernando County and in Brooksville. Um, and just remembering everything that they did for this community, you know, um, generations of family who fought, you know, for the United States in wars and served our country through that or served our served our local either city or county civically or were teachers um, in the school system mm -hmm. or um, just were examples and leaders in their church. I have this great letter um, that Grandma McCallan wrote to mm -hmm. her children um, soon before she died and it was about raising a child and it, um, every single thing that she wrote about raising a child um, it is still applicable today and it just showed what type of people they were and i want i really want that to be remembered most that um you know the etterington's and the snows and the hedicks and the mccallans and uh the mayos they were they were good people they gave back to their community um they were good christian people who uh, believed in the church and believed in um putting others first and, and putting community first and did a lot of good in the community and that's that's the richest history and heritage i think we have right um, yeah, no, it's definitely something that I think is um, hugely important and on a larger scale just because of what, you know, the times that we've seen, you know, through the Civil War and through um, the Reconstruction period, um, just like even, and I don't, like, this is something that is like so important to be able to preserve and remember for the generations that come after us because history teaches us so much. And I think there's a lot, you know, we can be proud of um, and all the people, you know, that, that have been on the Hill. Um, there's a lot that can come out of that and that people can be proud of. Um, and sure. treat people kindly and, right. and with love and respect. And, and when you do that, you know, you get through it. Very cool. So um, Andrea right now is helping, um, what is the exact title of the committee that you're doing? I mean, we could call it Historic Hernando. I don't have a name for it, but that was okay. the one that sounded the most. Okay. We have a name in progress. Um, but <laughs> basically um, the committee is going to be helping make sure that we assist uh, the museums and Historic uh, Preservation Society in just getting all of the information that everybody seems to have little pockets of access to and getting it into a way that the whole community at large can access it. So uh, one of the things is through a podcast that Andrea started and then uh, we're also working on updating the walking tour so that um, every house and every property is included in that. Right now there's a lot of gaps and um, we were talking beforehand that we just feel like with in this digital age there's so much opportunity to access information that we haven't been able to access. And so we really want people to be able to walk through the city and be able to be informed if they want to be on what has been in these buildings. So uh, Blake, your family has a, a building downtown. What is the, what's the story there? Um, so my family has a business called Snow and Bell Incorporated and the original structure that they were in was the original Tammy, Tammy Amy Cafe. Um, so when my grandfather bought it in the 1950s, he actually had to clean the chicken coop out of the back of it to allow for business <laughs> to happen because the little restaurant there, they had a chicken coop in the back and that's where they got their chicken from to fry their chicken. So it's the original Tammy Amy Cafe. And then they have uh, expanded and owned the, uh, the building next door, which they bought in the 90s. Um, but they're historic buildings. Um, the, the structures, uh, the interior has all of that original design with the tin roofs and the earth tin ceiling and, um, you know, the exposed brick and the old, the old do office doors. Mm -hmm. And the upstairs of the building at 22 North Broad Street um, actually used to be a women's um, a collegiate school in um, the 1930s and 40s. And I have an aunt, my Aunt Doris, whose, um, whose husband owned the Brooksville Lumberyard, which is a historic site downtown. 
Um, she went to um, kind of a women's collegiate secretarial school that was housed there on that second floor back then. So that's just a cool little history that. Just also that tied to here because that was a, a Margaret Dreyer Robbins uh, initiative, initiative to get that yeah. thing going. But yeah. your family is also tied to that building because mm -hmm. of what was what was the Hedic um, um, business? David Hedic, the mm -hmm. dentist. He had his dentist. Office he had his dentist there. office yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really neat. That's it really is. neat actually is. to yeah. think about it now and to know that. Yes. That's your family. I see what you're doing now, yeah. Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> you're bringing yeah, it, all it all together. Oh, and that's that's the point. Like, um, you know, people talk about Kevin Bacon and whatever the points are to that. But the cool thing about Brooksville is you literally can intertwine and figure out the connection so quickly. And I, I do think that's part of um, what makes us protective of each other and also resiliency because we want to make sure that everybody succeeds. And right. um, and I think that's very evident. So any any last thing that either of you wanted to talk about, a story that you wanted to tell before we are done? Well, I would just end with, you know, in 1851, Anderson and Francis came here together to see this property and they built homes here, they built businesses here, they uh, built families here. And they here, served in multiple capacities. They did. Each of them, I think, they were... Did. I mean, I know Anderson Mayo was a judge. He was, yeah. I believe he was at one point a sheriff. I mm -hmm. mean, they all like, county commission they were all involved yeah. in county commission because they were, who you know, they were leaders in their community. Yeah. And so. likewise, you know, I'm proud to say that we're both here sitting today, trying to be leaders in our community, building businesses here, trying to be civically involved. So that heritage that they started in the 1850s still lives on today uh, in both of us and in our families as well. Right. Yeah, that's fun. I bet they're watching. We'll say hi to the families, oh, right? Yeah, they, they fly around uh, my house all the time. There you go. All my little cardinals and Carolina chickadees. Yeah, they're all neat. Thank you guys so much for coming out today and uh, enjoying the breeze on the hill. And do we want to mention trying to recruit? Oh yes, if you would like to help Andrea with all of this research, you can do it from your own home, but contact uh, she or myself and we'd love to get you connected with doing that. Yeah, yes, I need help. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today for this look back at Hernando history. Thank you so much to Blake Etherington Bell and Andrea Hedick Reed for joining us and doing our kickoff on our program that we'll be continuing on a monthly basis. So we encourage you to come back and check out the channel next month as you learn more about where we've been and uh, who we are today. Thank you.